How to make a silicone mermaid tail at home. Many people prefer to dress up like mermaids while attending parties and other events. While commercial mermaid tails are available, they can be pretty expensive. Why not learn how to make a swim able silicone mermaid tail at home? With the right ingredients, you can create your own costume that you can use and keep for a long period of time. Method 1 Using Silicone Fabric 1. Make or purchase swimming fins. Swimming fins and diving fins are similar, but a swimming fin is designed to enforce and enable you to kick and swim like a dolphin. Swimming fins provide greater resistance, making them excellent for swimming. Since you are creating a mermaid tail, you will need a swimming fin with a single blade. Mono fins are the perfect choice. If you do not have enough money to buy mono, Fins, you can make mermaid swimming fins by duct, taping two swimming fins together. 2. Make your pattern With the mon oven on your feet, simply trace the shape of your legs to fit on a cardboard or cardstock to create the pattern for measurements. Note that working on the pattern with measurements will require more math, but this is better as you can get an accurately fitting mermaid tail. 3. Cut the fabric. You need to buy fabric first before you can start making your mermaid tail. Since you are going to make a silicone mermaid tail, you may use nylon spandex for this project. Look for thicker silicone fabrics as the thicker your fabric is, the more realistic your mermaid tail will look like. Fold the fabric in two to ensure that the side you want is visible for touching, and then trace the pattern onto the fabric. You can use sewer's chalk, a marker, or pen for tracing the pattern. Use straight pins to pin the traced line so that the two fabrics are joined. After joining the two fabrics traced from the pattern, you can now cut them. Just make sure that you give at least a 1 inch allowance when you cut the fabric, and cut it using a sharp scissor to achieve a precise and neat cut. You need to ensure that you leave at least 1 to 2 inches allowance on the fabric at the top of the waistline area. You must cut the fabric accordingly to the shape of the fin that you choose to use. 4. Sew the tail. Sew down both sides of the fabric to join them together. Remember to follow your pattern to ensure that you sew the fabric correctly. Remove the straight pins that you used a while ago as you no longer need them. Sew the fabric to the mon oven correctly and sturdily. It can be best if you have a sewing machine to ensure that you sew the mermaid tail accurately. After sewing the mon oven and the fabric, you can start sewing the fabric on the waistline area. By putting a zipper on the waistline, you will be able to get off the tail more easily. Method 2 Using a Mold 1. Buy a mon oven or swimming feet. Choose and buy a suitable mon oven, and then create a sleeve of neoprene. The latex must have something to adhere to. Break out the sewing machine and make a fabric tail for yourself. Don't mistake neoprene for neoprene. They are different materials. Neoprene will stretch out eventually, and your tail will no longer fit. 2. Make the mold for the scales. There are many ways to do this step, and it is up to you which method you want to use. You can make scales out of foam that you punch circles out of. It is best to use the adhesive foam that you use to make art projects with. Use a filed pipe and a hammer to punch out a lot of the scale shapes, then lay them in the shape of your scale mold. The other method would be one sculpt out the scales, using clay and a cookie cutter or foil folded into the shape you want. 3. Complete the mold. The scale sheet should be completed in a box that you can then pour white hydrocal into. Be sure to build walls around the scales. You can see from the example above that we use 2 by 4 planks and then fill in the edges with clay. 4. Make the tail or fluke. 
you're only sculpting half of this tail before making two pulls of it. Pulls are what you pull out of the mold. Don't make it too thick, since latex takes forever to dry and won't hold up well with a thick mold. Note, sculpt the fluke very close to the monofin size. 5. Complete the tail fluke. Use a brush to paint the latex into the mold. The unfortunate thing about liquid latex is that it has to air dry. This means that if you paint it too thick, it will never cure. To get a color base on the liquid latex, add acrylic into it. This makes it so that when your tail gets scratched, there won't be a giant white mark on it. You're going to have to paint over the tail anyways, but this will ensure that you have something to base the color on. Tips Give your latex layers sufficient time to dry. Work in a well, ventilated area.